Iceland. Okay, here's our flight path from New York City to Iceland. Five and a half hours, not bad. There's the Blue Lagoon. There's the rock name. Okay, rock. Our hotel's name for that rock. There's the lighthouse on the hill. And there's the cliff that fell into the ocean, the lighthouse right there. So. And we are about ready to land at Keflavik. So this is a lava field leading to Iceland's number one tourist attraction, which is the Blue Lagoon. Iceland, wow, it's been torn apart by two tectonic plates converging on Iceland, the Eurasian and the North American plate, but we'll get to that a little bit later on. This Blue Lagoon is actually heated by geothermal sources because there's so many volcanoes and geothermal energy around Iceland. It's kind of pricey to get in, but it's worth it. And especially if you have blue drinks at the Blue Lagoon. Yep, pretty interesting. So before we go to Reykjavik, we are going to do a tour of the southeast part of Iceland. And these cool. are Arctic terns, and you won't believe where they came from. They flew up from Antarctica. Every year they go from Antarctica up to Iceland to the breeding grounds like you're seeing right now, and then they fly back. It's 12,000 mile trip. Unbelievably impressive. And there are thousands of Arctic terns here in Iceland during the summertime. So after visiting the world-famous Arctic Terns, we are going to go and visit other things in the southeast part of Iceland, like this gorgeous old church. And then we are going to go to our Which most is favorite. where the Eurasian plate meets the North American plate. Very cool place. This is the North American plate over here. This is the European plate. This is Moonscape. There's some geothermal hot springs there. Okay, I'm on the Eurasian plate right now. Ready? It's going to be real fast. I'm going to run to North America. Here we go. And now I'm in North America. <laughs> So we drive to very close to the coast, and there are thousands of Arctic terns there. What the heck? Wow. Those are the geothermal plants. And our guide said the earthquake came right through here and split this. This used to be all one mountain, split it right in half. This used to be all one cliff. And that two earthquakes came through and just dropped it right to the ocean. And it used to be a, a lighthouse up there and that fell into the ocean. There's the little island that our hotel is named after. And this is what it, what is it again? Elbe. Elbe. And then, like I said, the earthquake went through here and knocked down part of the cliff. And this is what it looks like now. And 
the lighthouse was right up there and it fell into the ocean. This area is wickedly active. That's what our guide just said. And you can see behind the lighthouse, that's all geothermal, everything. And it's going crazy over there. So now we're gonna drive to that area and see what's going on. So this was a walkway before the last earthquake. And then this fissure opened up and there's a big one right behind it. So back to the southeast coastline, where there are two natural swimming pools. Wow. So when the tide is high, it comes up and over the rocks. Yeah. Wow. There's another swimming pool right there. So now we are going to travel toward Reykjavik, but before we get there, we are going to a memorial Total for a B-24 that crashed here during World War II. But what you're looking at right now is the devastation brought about by volcanic eruptions. There's no anything here, just lava fields. Absolutely amazing. So this B-24 was named Hot Stuff, and it was the very first B-24 to complete 25 missions in Europe without being shot down. Unfortunately, when it took off from here, it crashed in a mountain, and the only survivor was the tail gunner, and they had to chop him out of the wreckage. So when we get to Reykjavik, they are having a bacon festival. So the very first thing we normally do when we get to a new city is take a food tour. And here is the most famous hot dogs in the world. So Michelle is eating the most famous hot dogs. Mm, the most famous hot dogs in Reykjavik, Iceland. There is always a line for these hot dogs, like you see. So it's got... Um, Mustard, ketchup, it's got fried onion, raw onion, Just rem excellent. remoulade. Yep, very good. And it's made of lamb and beef. Yep. And the next thing we're going to try is puffin. So this is puffin. And we're going to try it right now. The meat looks very dark. So after the puffin, which was quite good, we are going to eat Greenland shark. So this is fermented Greenland shark. These sharks are 20 feet long, and they actually live 450 years. But their meat is poisonous. So what the Icelandic people do is they can bury the meat and let it rot for six months to get all the ammonia out of it. And if you could smell this, it smells just like ammonia. All right, so here we go. It's very cheesy. Oh, baby. All right, so drink your beer. Yeah, yeah, huh? Yeah, I don't know. After the green Somewhere shark, this is minke whale, right. yeah. and we dove with minke whales off Australia, but now we're actually eating one. So here we go. So this is a mustard sauce there with it. Is it chewy? No, it's not bad at all. Like, what's the consistency of it? Um, it may taste like, it tastes a little bit like moose, actually. Oh! Yeah. Hard to cut? No, it's, it's not bad. But it, it tastes like moose or not as good as elk. But the city of Reykjavik is quite beautiful, so we started walking around, and we found this church called Halgrim's Kirja, and wow, it's gorgeous, and it has crazy pipe organs and a huge vaulted ceiling. It's absolute worth going to see. So the next day, we are doing a golden circle tour, and this is Golfoss 
waterfalls and it is spectacular. One of the biggest waterfalls in Iceland. It's wild. Look, looks like it's going right down into the earth right there. Looks like up there, you can see the water coming down into there. And then it comes down here, down here, and then goes right down there. All right, we're finally at Bolfoss Waterfall in the Iceland. Wow. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Gold Falls in English. Yep, Gold Falls in English. So on our way to Strokur Geyser, we see a gigantic glacier. I don't know if it's a continental glacier or not, but it is enormous. And there you see it off the side. Beauty. Yep, I got it. Oh, good. Okay, we can get back in his hand yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> so now I'm super excited because we are going snorkeling at the Silfra Fisher. That is a super dry wetsuit. The temperature of the water is about 34 degrees. And here is the way we're going to go. Our two guides are explaining it right now. And there's the little path, and we will actually be able to touch both the um, North American plate and the Eurasian plate at the same so time. So here we are, all suited up, and our guide is getting ready right now. There is the difference. On the left side is the North American, on the right is the Eurasian. And this water is super cold, but it is super, super clean, and you can drink from it. So before I started taking my underwater video with my GoPro, Michelle took a couple shots of us entering the fissure. So I turned on my GoPro camera, noticed there's no fish, very little plant life, and our guide said our lips will sting because the water's so cold. Well, he was right. It really stung all of our lips, but after about a minute, our lips became numb so that wasn't a factor anymore. And this was just an enjoyable snorkel through a fissure that separates the Eurasian plate from the North American plate. And a little further up in the video, I am able to touch both plates at the exact same time. After a while, we ran into a little bit of plant life. It got very shallow. That's what it looks like on top. Beautiful day. And then we got into a very narrow fissure, as you'll see right here. And this is where you can touch both plates at the same time. So there they are touching the same plates. Our dive master will show us that we turn around and he'll get a picture of us touching both plates. So after we touch time. both sides, there's Michelle taking a picture and that's me with the white jet fins on. So after our snorkel, we jumped in the van and drove across the lake to the other side to see what it looked like. So on this side of the crack is the North American plate and that is the European plate. It's all the way up to that mountain, it's all the way down. This is beautiful. Yeah. All the way down to there. And we snorkeled all the way from there all the way over to there. So this is a narrow part where the two plates meet and we're just walking down the path to where it starts to widen out. Wow. Right now we are walking between the plates. This one is the North American plate, 
and this one is the European plate. Just amazing. And it gets wider every time the plates move, they're moving apart. So this little valley is getting wider. So after our Golden Circle tour, we go back to Reykjavik and Michelle found this sign, which was super cool. Fish and chips, local beer, colder than your ex's heart. So after we had a little bit to eat and drink, we just walked around and took advantage of all the sunshine and Michelle got great pictures. But she also found a sensational bakery called Braud. And boy, the next morning we went back and we had piping hot rolls, sticky buns, whatever you wanted. And we just ate and ate. And that's a picture of Michelle having a good breakfast. So after a wonderful breakfast, Michelle is going to go horseback riding on an Icelandic pony. She's never been on a horse before. And she told me it was gentle, wonderful time. And they don't import any horses because they don't want their horses to be not pure Icelandic ponies. Pretty interesting. So Michelle's horse was named Siona, and she rode for about an hour and a half and loved every minute of it. So while Michelle was going horseback riding, I'm going fishing on happy tours. I was going fishing for rock and kelp cod and a couple other different types, and it was a beautiful day to go fishing. I felt a little guilty because there's a puffin right there, and we just had puffin two days ago for an hors d'oeuvre. But they are a beautiful bird and they're pretty tasty too. And look at all of them. There were thousands of puffins all over the place. And what I didn't know is they burrowed in the ground and that's where their nests were and that's where they raised their young. So look at all these puffins all over. And they're definitely a seabird because Fish. they eat very small fish. fish did I just catch? This is the Atlantic cod. Atlantic cod and it's, a... and it's red in color because it lives in the kelp. Oh cool. All right. Thank you <laughs> Anna. So I caught nine and this was the biggest of them all and the cool part about it was Anna filleted them right on the deck there. of the boat and then they grilled them when we got into shore absolutely fresh as possible and super delicious. These two boats right here are whale boats and they go after finback whales. They're the greyhounds of the sea. The finbacks are really fast, but those two boats should be out hunting finbacks, but they put in their, they put in their reservation too late, and so they couldn't get ready, and so the fin whales are safe around here because they can't go out this year. After fishing and horseback riding, this was our last day in Reykjavik, and Michelle found a husband daycare center. Great opportunity to shop alone in Iceland without a nagging husband. While she went shopping, I was taken care of at the husband daycare center. We went to our most favorite place to eat. It was called The Bastard. They had great brew and food, and a wonderful outdoor patio where you could eat and drink. So we really did love Reykjavik, but it was time to go back to the Keflavik airport and go home. So here's our last parting shot of Iceland. It was wonderful. We will go back again.